Greetings and salutations. Thank you for clicking on this video. This is the very last Linux tip video that will be posted to this channel. And in this video, I'm going to show you three ways that you can create a bootable USB stick from a Linux desktop. We are in Linux Mint, so that means that we have a tool that's built right into the system. So if we go to the menu and we just type in USB, you see that we have a couple of tools that show up. And the one that we're interested in is the USB Image Writer. And this little box pops up right here. First thing we need to do is choose our ISO file. Now an ISO file is an image of a disk of some sort. In this case, it's an image of a DVD disk. But it could also be an image of a hard drive or any other kind of block storage device. So we'll go into Downloads. And in my case, I keep a bunch of ISO images in this one called ISO. And for purposes of demonstration, we will create an Ubuntu 1710 bootable disk. Now, we will choose the disk we're going to use. And we have a SanDisk Cruiser plugged in, 64 gigabyte disk. That's the one that we are going to use for demonstration purposes. And now, we will click right. It's going to ask for administrator privileges because it's going to blank the disk to do this. And now the program goes off and starts transferring the data inside the file onto the disk. Okay, it's just about finished. It's actually been running for about, about two minutes or so. It's done. It's complete. So we can go ahead and close the program. And then we will unplug our USB disk. And we'll plug it back in. See if the system actually finds the disk and sees if it can read it. It's most likely bootable which is really cool. So I just plugged it back in and there it is, pops up and we're good to go. So that's way number one that you can create a bootable USB stick in Linux Mint. What if you're not on Linux Mint? What if you're running Ubuntu or Solus or some other distribution of Linux? Most distributions of Linux that come with a desktop come with a tool called Disks. And if your distribution does not, you need to install that. Just look for GNOME Disk Utility. And I'm going to open up that program right now. And you need to make sure that you choose the proper disk. In this case, we know it's a 64 gigabyte disk, so that's it. And come up here to the menu. And we want to choose Restore Disk Image right there. So we need to choose our image. And it opened up to that uh, directory because obviously I did this before. And this time around, let's make this an Ubuntu Mate 16.04 bootable disk. We're going to go ahead and start restoring. And we're going to say OK. Absolutely. Go ahead and restore. Give it the password, turn it loose. This should take about the same amount of time as the first tool we looked at. Just about finished now. It did finish. And once again, we will unplug the disk. And we will plug it back in to see whether the system is going to recognize it as a bootable disk. And it is back in. Yep, we're good to go on that one. Now, using disks to do this works. But I would caution you that uh, disks is a very powerful program. And it works with all block storage devices that are currently plugged into your computer or installed in it. So if I would do exactly the same operation I showed you, but I would choose this 160 gigabyte disk right here, which happens to be my boot drive right now for the Linux Mint OS, it would blow it out and it would turn it into a very fast <laughs> USB stick uh, and I would be able to boot the computer, but it would be asking me to install it, and it it would be very weird. It would definitely be strange. But the main thing would be that it would mess up my system. So be careful with this one. Make sure that you are focused on the drive that you actually want to use, and so forth. So that is way number two. Now we are going to go on to doing this from a terminal. So let's bring in our full screen terminal to do this. 
And this is by far the um, most dangerous thing way to do this because you have to make sure that you have all of your parameters in the command that you use correct. If you get one letter off, for instance, uh, in your drive lettering, then you could blow out your entire system. It, it, it can happen. So proceed with extreme caution if you are going to be using this method. And the first thing that we're going to do is we need to change over to the directory where our image files are. Those are those ISO files. So we, in this case, we'll go to downloads and we have them in ISO. All right. And then we can list our files. We know what we're dealing with here. The next thing that we need to do is to figure out where our USB drive is connected to the system and what drive letter that has been given in dev. So if I would type that in correctly, we wouldn't have got that problem. But what would a video that I did where I was in the terminal be without typos in it, gang? It's almost become a running joke lately. So there you go laugh it up okay so we see that our disk is currently at SDC that is where the system has mounted the actual drive itself and then the partition on the disk is mounted at uh, media slash Joe slash Ubuntu Mate and on and on it goes so what we're gonna do is we're going to want to write one of our ISO files up there to that disk and we can do that from the terminal using the dd command so let me go ahead and uh, clear the screen and i will very carefully structure the command and then i will execute it once i am absolutely sure that i have it correct so it is sudo dd and then our input file this is going to be our file that we're going to use uh, our iso file image file that is going to go on to the disk. And in this case, I want to put this back to where I want it to be, which is Linux Mint with the Cinnamon desktop. So I'm just going to go that far with it. And I know that it's Cinnamon, so I'm going to put in a C and an I. And that is exactly the one that we want to put on there. So that is our input file. Our output file equals, now this is the drive, dev. The device directory is where all block store all devices are mounted and given some sort of way to figure out what you're looking at. And this one is going to be S D C. So that is the device that we are going to be doing this to. It is imperative that you be very careful here because the DD command assumes that you're doing what you want to do. It does not correct. It will very happily blow out your system drive no problem just like the disks command if you have the wrong one select uh, disks program we looked at before if you have the wrong one selected bam it just disappears so we need to double triple check so we have sudo dd and our input file is linux mint 18.3 cinnamon 64 bit dot iso and our output is going to be dev sdc which is the drive that we have been using in this video. So I'm confident now that this is going to work and do what I want it to do. So I will press enter. It asks for my password and then it goes off and does it. The DD command by default does not show you any output on the screen. So we will come back when it's done. Okay, DD has finished its work and it says that all of the data was copied to the disk. So once again, we will switch back over to a regular desktop and we will unplug the disk and plug it back in to make sure that it took that. So go ahead and clear that out. And then we will plug that disk right back in. Of course, it doesn't want to go in. There you go. All right. Got it in there. All right. So now we have our Linux Mint 18.3 Cinnamon bootable disk. And there you have three different ways to create bootable media in a Linux distribution and one of those three ways regardless of what Linux distribution you happen to be working with is going to do the trick for you it's going to make it happen so uh, one more thing about USB before we wrap up the video there are people who have asked me about creating USB media with a persistence file now that is a way that you can create a bootable USB disk 
and then it will remember the changes that you make so you can install software you can do things with it uh, that is cool to play with but I would not count on that to be something that you would use all the time it is important to remember that Linux has the peculiar ability to run a desktop from a live environment simply to be able to test and demonstrate the system or you can also run certain recovery tasks that way like if you have to run a program like Gparted or Timeshift or CYA's restore script that's what that is designed to do it's not designed to be used on a daily basis to actually do work but you can create a persistence file and there are programs out there that you can install to do that so it is possible but it is not possible with what usually comes installed with your Linux distribution so I would encourage you to go research those programs and figure out which one that you would like to use if that's functionality that for some reason that you need Thank you for watching the video. This is the last Linux tip video that will be posted and added to the Linux tip playlist. So thank you everybody who has uh, watched this series of videos over the years. We're going to be doing something different for 2018 and there will be another video posted which will explain what that's going to be about. Check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. Also check out freedompenguin.com for lots of really cool stories about Linux. Links to all of that are available in the description to the video. All you got to do is click show more. I am gone.